Welcome back to the action here at the Neon Dynasty Championship. I'm Ailey Loney alongside Mani Davuti, and we are gonna get straight into the action, but that's actually a lie, because Mani, I want to talk to you about these decks quickly, because these two mid-range lists are super sweet. This Grixis one, created by Sam Black, Aaron Gertler, and his team from Sanctum for All, 19 and 1 in their testing. That's impressive. It, it, it's definitely impressive. And you know, this match is it's sort of a story of outliers uh, in their team. Sam Black, Aaron Gertler, the only two members of their team to play this Grixis midrange deck in Alchemy. On the other side, Kenta Harane and Riku Kumagai, who we saw earlier, the only two members of their team to bring this Rakdos midrange deck in Alchemy. So really the outliers on the team trying to show who called it right. <laughs> it's always nice. Nice feeling to get the little one-up on your teammates, but the players are ready to rock and roll, so let's jump on in and see how these two mid-range decks play out. The one thing I love about this Grixis mid-range deck is the first time I looked at it, I was like, wait, what's the blue for? Ah, suspicious stowaway. We got some Kaito Shizuki action in there too. That Planeswalker is so sneaky, because it's like, oh, it's fine, I'll just kill it on my turn, right? Nope. It phases out the first turn it's down. Have you ever had that happen to you, Marnie, where you're like, yes, I'll kill it. Oh, no, wait, it's not there anymore. Definitely more <laughs> often than I'd like to admit. <laughs> it's one of those cards where I think a lot of people actually started with Kaido when looking at this alchemy format and trying to figure out how can I break this card? Because the raw power level is there. It's a three mana Planeswalker. It has sort of built-in protection, both by making a blocker and that first turn phasing out ability, and it draws cards repeatedly. So it has all the makings of an incredibly powerful card. And it, I know a lot of people said in their testing, the first place they started was, can I break Kaido somehow? And <laughs> this team ultimately brought one. So maybe they didn't figure out how to break it, but they definitely wanted a single copy in this deck. Oh, for sure. And uh, doubtless, Kaito will be useful when it does show up in this matchup. Now, both players are 0-1, so not the start they were hoping to get in this tournament, but still plenty of rounds of magic to go. So let's take a look at the opening hands here and get the action underway as we kick things off from Kenta Harane with a mountain over the eye tire down here for Sam Black. What do you make of these hands? Well, most notably, Kenta's on the play. Both players have a copy of City Stalker Connoisseur already. Kenta is going to be the one able to play it first and nab Sam's copy out of his hand should the game play out this way. And with that check for traps taking the favor fable of the mirror break here as well this is a great start for Kenta in what will probably be a pretty attrition and grindy matchup. So one problem out of the hand of Sam Black but still several to come. We got Infernal Grass Power Word Kill for any creatures that may hit the battlefield, but at the point, it just looks like removal central for both players. Two copies of a Braid for Kenta, also with the Infernal Grasp, and as you mentioned, the City Stalker Connoisseur. Yeah, Graveyard Trespasser, excellent in these sorts of matchups, just because it will always be a two for one if your opponent wants to remove it using this sort of instant speed interaction, that ward ability causing them to discard a card means if Sam just got two brains for the price of one here from Kenta. <laughs> but again, once Kenta plays the City Stalker Connoisseur in his hand and takes Sam's away, as we see it as the most expensive card in Sam Black's hand, Sam is just going to be left with a couple of removal spells of his own and now Kenta has a Graveyard Trespasser waiting in the wings. Yeah, so there is City Stalker on City Stalker Violence, as you were, as you would have it. So there is that big threat dealt with. Two removal spells, like you mentioned, can take care of this creature threat on the battlefield. Does currently have an answer per each creature that Kenta has. But beyond that, really no proactive plays available for Sam Black at this point. Yeah, the Hive of the Eye Tyrant sitting on Sam's side is certainly valuable just because in these grindy matchups, once both players have expended their resources and started trading off, it ends up coming down to those creature lands, maybe dealing the final points of damage. Kenta does have a blood token available to him, so if he starts flooding out a bit, he is able to try to fix those draws using that token. But at the moment, it's pretty even. Both players sort of have one removal spell, one threat uh, goldspan dragon a Ooh. pretty great follow-up threat though and I, I think kenta is actually inching ahead here with that draw yeah definitely that uh, blood token putting in good work there unfortunately they're ditching the fifth land so kenta's now hoping that there's another land on top of the library 
Where does he want to go with this turn, though? Decides against casting the Graveyard Trespass, and is just going to switch it to nighttime and send the turn on back to Sam Black. Yeah, I think Kenta's line of thinking there is Sam has the two open mana to kill this Trespasser on the end step and still untap and activate the Hive of the Eye Tyrant. Because he's not doing anything here, I can pass and potentially bait out this play where Sam is incentivized to activate. I get to remove it and then play my threat. And that means Sam will have to take an entire turn off to use that removal spell. So the sequence of events works out perfectly for Henta, Kenta, and it's because of that patience that he showed there. Yep. Was able to find a land, unfortunately, as a tap land, but, you know, we can't be too sad about the turn where you get Graveyard Glutton down. It's a 4-4, it chows two things in the Graveyard. You know, the life gain is certainly nothing to sniff at in these kind of grindy matchups, so looking pretty good here. Yeah, Kenta doesn't want this game to go that late, just because both players are top decking quite well in the matchup and there's a lot of threats so he actually lets go of the Hagra mauling to ensure that he has goldspan dragon available next turn as he feels like that will offer him the most likely route to victory now sam had to cast two spells this turn so it is going back to daytime the graveyard trespasser will flip and now in a race between Goldspan Dragon and Graveyard Trespasser, <laughs> I, I, I like the Trespass. I like the Goldspan side a lot more. And Oh, definitely. <laughs> unfortunately for Sam, uh, Kenta does have the mana available in that treasure token to cast that Infernal Grasp in response to the City Stalker Connoisseur trigger. So Sam won't actually get the discard value that he's looking for. And the race still looks decent for Kenta. Land off the top here for Kenta Harane. This Goldspan Dragon is doing work though. Down to 10 goes Sam Black, who only has the Trespasser, now the Glutton, and this Blood Token to his name. So we're going to sacrifice that, discard this land, see if we can find some more action here. Removal for this Goldspan Dragon would be ideal at this point. <laughs> Another Graveyard Trespasser, pretty ideal as well, as now Sam has Kenta on a two-turn clock, and with just the land in hand, Kenta isn't really doing much to change that. Sam is actually pulling firmly ahead here now, thanks to Kenta's maybe subpar draws in the last couple of turns, just finding more land and not being able to back up that Goldspan Dragon means that the extra treasure tokens he's getting isn't doing enough here. It's not unfortunately. Here comes another graveyard. Glutton's gonna hit the battlefield exile. A couple more cards here, and uh, things are looking dire straits for Kenta Harane, who draws another land, and now won't be able to attack with his goldspan dragon. Yeah, suddenly you're on blocky duty with your dragon, not where you want to be. Sam draws a Conspiracy Theorist, one of the spicy cards <laughs> in this deck. There's a, a lot of cool tricks with this card, actually, in this sort of build. As you mentioned, there's the Suspicious Stowaway, there is Kaido. Even these Graveyard Trespassers, when your opponent tries to pay the ward cost and discards a card, uh, it's all just adding up to you grinding your opponent's value down, whether it's you gaining cards or your opponent losing cards and yeah impressive game one victory from sam black impressive indeed unfortunately a little unlucky there for kenzo hirane with several lands back to back but let's go look at the sideboard let's see what we're grabbing here against these mid-range decks what's the go-to for you here money well, you're going to want some of the discard spells, and you're really going to want some of the grindier cards, I believe. We see <laughs> all the Planeswalkers coming in from Kenta's side, as it, it, the name of the game is Go More Late, answer your opponent's threats by out of the hand, not off the board. We see a lot of removal spells being taken out. On the other side, Sam's pretty measured. Only five cards in, five cards out, but it's most of that removal. I love it. Super friends assemble as we see Sauron, Onyx, and Lolth join the fray here for Kenta Harane. And I mean, if you've been playing any magic in the last little while, you'll know that these three black planeswalkers are a force to be reckoned with in whichever shell that they find themselves, whether it's mono black, whether it's Grixis, whether it's just Rakdos, they can definitely win a game for you if it goes long. So. And you see both players sort of prioritizing the higher end of threats 
from the opponent. One of the big cards coming in from Kenta is actually the three copies of Meat Hook Massacre, as <laughs> not only will it answer multiple creatures from Sam, but it's also a way to answer the Graveyard Trespassers without having to discard a card, which is pretty huge when every card matters in the matchup. Earlier in that game, we saw Kenta be forced to discard a second copy of a Braid to get rid of a Trespasser. And when the game comes down to you being attacked by two Trespassers to close things out, you're really missing that a Braid that you had to let go of early on. Yeah, for sure. So being able to get a, an, an, a catch-all answer to those threats in the Meat Hook Massacre and another instance of life gain and drain there for the player, you know, gotta, gotta like the sideboarding decisions here against this uh, Grixis midrange deck. Yeah, you do see Kenta sort of agonizing over the last few card choices as it, it, it may be difficult, ends up leaving two Goldspan Dragons in the deck and opting not to have the duresses, perhaps identifying the Sam has a pretty strong early game of creatures, so the duresses might not deliver the results that he's looking for. Opening hand, pretty happy with that. Two Check for Traps and two Town Raiser Tyrants, so some lands are going to get set on fire. I suspect, as we have a mulligan down on Sam Black's side of things, this Daneful Stroke is uh, unwillingly being sent to the bottom of the library. Not the best hand from Sam. He doesn't really have early interaction for the hand. He doesn't have a two-drop creature to curve into Kaido and be able to get that hard draw immediately. But ultimately, he's really trying to figure out which resources matter here. And... Putting down that black red line, one of the awkward parts of this hand is there isn't any blue mana in it right now. Mm -hmm. Sam identify he needs to draw a land anyways, so keeping the blue cards is reasonable. But if his draws work out sort of awkwardly and Kenta has a pretty fast draw, this game could be over before Sam Black really ever gets a foothold in it. Well, let's see. Hopefully a third land with blue in it arrives for Sam Black as he's forced to start things off with the Haunted Ridge. Two Hive of the Eye Tyrants down. For Harane, who's now having a good old look, checking for any traps, which you should always do before entering any dungeon, I've heard. <laughs> yeah, I think this is the type of hand that Kenta isn't overly unhappy to see. There isn't fast pressure that would line up well against the hand that he has. And looking at those trespassers, he's like, you know what? You don't have blue mana yet. I'm going to leave the blue cards alone. I can take the second trespasser before it comes <laughs> down next turn. And then it's your hand against my tyrants. And that damage is going to start adding up pretty quickly when Sam Black isn't in a position to sacrifice the few lands that he has. Yeah, certainly not. And uh, not drawing any lands over those two turns for Sam Black. So stuck on two right now. Lands are plenty, though, for Kenta Harani, who's going to start rocking some Town Raiser Tyrants. Here they come. Take your pick of a land, and uh, those are going to start doing some extra damage to Sam Black on the end step. Yeah, I don't know if a hive can really be considered a town, but it is certainly going to be raised <laughs> all the same here. Someone lives there okay. I'm, Hi, I, I'm sure a lot of some things <laughs> live in that hive. Yeah, I don't want to go in there. <laughs> Oy, lands of plenty again for Kenta, but he's not going to be too sad about it with two Town Raiser Tyrants now. Both taking their pick of lands that they want to blow up. And uh, there finally is land number three for Sam Black. Forsaken Crossroads, an awesome addition in Alchemy. I would like to petition to have this card printed in paper because, I mean, let's be honest. You only have to remember who went first. It's not hard, right? It's, it's a little hard. Fortunately, Sam did not go first this game. So it is an untapped land if he wants it. He has to judge, what am I doing with this blue mana? Do I need to play Kaido here? Do I need to find that card? So certainly goes for the untapped mana. Suspicious stowaway and leaving up the blood token. Very reasonable as well, considering he's trying to make those land drops. But the problem remains in these two giant dragons and your lands that are burning. Yeah, it's all a little bit too much ouchy coming through there from Kenta Hirana's side of things. So as you mentioned, if that game went quickly, and it certainly did, blink and you'll miss it, it's going to be bad news bears for Sam Black, but not out of it yet. Both players are now at one and one. Yeah, you see Kenta is actually changing his sideboarding based on whether he's on the play or on the draw. We see those two copies of Goldspan Dragon go out again, and it looks like the Dragon's Fire is perhaps coming in, wanting a bit more cheap interaction when you're on the draw against the two drops 
the Sam is presenting. We've seen the suspicious throwaways as well as the conspiracy theorists. Those are cards that really demand to be answered if you can early on before they get those attacks in. So perhaps Kenta wanting to just balance the range here a bit and actually thinking about those duresses now on the draw in place of two of those tyrants. Very confident sideboarding decisions here for Kenta Hirane as we jump into match, or excuse me, to game number three here. Between these two players, it's round two of the Neon Dynasty Championship. Thank you very much for hanging out with us today. Hope you're all having a wonderful day wherever you are. And uh, I hope you're all ready for some awesome magic this weekend because it's going to be an absolute cracker of a weekend. Six lands, Fable of the Mirror Breaker, and Sam you? is still thinking about it because do Fable it. is incredible. <laughs> but if your opponent has a duress, your entire game falls apart. So really discipline this... Mulligan from Sam. This isn't much better, though. It's not much better, but it's not duressable. You can't really yeah. go down to five in this matchup because you can at least top deck well with this hand. You do have a scry with the Forsaken for Crossroads, so mm -hmm. you can't try to fix things a little, but five would be really difficult okay. on the play. And now you have a curve. Yeah, there's stuff to do. So salvaging a otherwise not great situation there for Sam Black as Graveyard Trespasser joins the hand alongside City Stalker Connoisseur. And the man lands always seem to show up right on time here for Kenta. Never never a tap land on his side. That's yeah, we're not even really talking about the fable in Kenta's hand. That is one of the most powerful cards in this matchup and maybe in the entire format. Mm -hmm. So the fact that Kenta is able to get it down before Sam nabs it out of the hand with that City Stalker Connoisseur is a pretty big deal. So Sam, Sam's hand working out pretty well here, but he wasn't able to beat out the fable. Yeah, and we saw in round one just how impressive Fable of the Mirror Breaker is once it hits chapter three, and you can just start copying your, your creatures. Town Razor Tyrants, Goldspan Dragons, Riku Kumagai using it so perfectly. So let's see what Kenta Hirane can do with the Fable of the Mirror Breaker in this game. Yeah, the rare opportunity where you get to choose which card you discard to the concert because <laughs> there were multiple two cost cards being the highest cost in the hand and discarding a second copy of Rahilda that was drawn that turn as well as a land but not really finding anything to deal with this connoisseur so now Kenta just has to hold this shaman token back and it, it's play the slower game get that fable online and hopefully find some place to copy with it yeah gets rid of the uh kaito uh getting rid of the kaito planeswalker there keeping the duress not too fussed about that though with two copies of the Meatook massacre in hand, so we'll still be able to get that powerful enchantment down the battlefield. And I love this. Conspiracy theorists plus blood tokens. Discarding the duress, you're still <laughs> going to be able to exile it and play it this turn. And this is sort of the engine the Sand Blast deck is not entirely built around, but trying to take advantage of when getting that extra value that is so good in these mid-range matchups. And Kenta, with just a copy of the Meat Hook Massacre left in hand, if he plays that for three, he's going to wipe his own board as well. So this isn't really a favorable spot for Kenta. And Sam, despite that mulligan to six, is looking pretty great here with a Graveyard Trespasser left in hand. I think certainly looking very good here for Sam Black as a Graveyard Trespasser. Arise for Kenta Hirane as well. So here comes the reflection of Kiki-Jiki. Next turn, it can start making some copies of things. Conspiracy Theorist offered the trade here with the little treasure maker. Yeah, Sam recognizes that if he blocks, well, Kenta can have options, but if he doesn't, Kenta may feel forced to cast this Meat Hook Massacre and wipe this board anyways. And now that Sam actually has the option to take that option away from Kenta. So it, it, it's really just taking two damage to force Kenta's hand. Otherwise, he gets to keep this theorist alive and continue draining this engine. City Stalker Connoisseur is going to chip in here for three more points of damage. And this duress just drawn is going to take care of the second copy of Meat Hook Massacre. So Hiran is hellbent. We're in top deck mode. What is the ideal draw in this situation for Hiran to get him back into this game? I would say Goldspan Dragon, but they're not in the deck. So... <laughs> 
<laughs> Maybe one of your remaining copies of Town Razor Tyrant would have been pretty good here. City Stalker Connoisseur would normally be great in this type of situation where you can start copying it during Sam's draw step with that reflection of Kikijiki and try to lock him out. But Sam came ready for that. He has the conspiracy theorist in play. So <laughs> he can actually work around that dream situation. And that means that Sam is sort of covered on most spaces against what Kenta can draw. Planeswalkers, perhaps, for Harade would uh, help him dig a little deeper into the deck, but Forsaken Crossroads, number two is going to hit the battlefield for Sam. Finds a Graveyard Trespasser, number two, on top of the library, and is he interested in keeping that? Or is there something else that he's going for? I would guess he wants it here because he's getting to the point where he can just start trading threats and be yeah. end, end up with more. But he does have to consider that that reflection of Kikijiki can just make extra graveyard gluttons for mm. Kenta. So it, it, it's one of those things where perhaps he just needs a removal spell so badly that he just can't play this game until he finds that. Reflection of Kikijiki is going to make another graveyard glutton. These ETB effects, just being able to copy creatures with those attached to them is so powerful with the saga. And you see the life gain and drain happening there once again. Mm. Oh, okay, okay. Now, it's been a long time since we've seen Kikijiki itself played, but the reflection of Kikijiki follows many of the same tricks, like if you make a copy during an end step of a turn, you get to keep that copy through the next turn. So Kenta is able to play this passive game where he can sit back and say, all right, well, if you attack, I'm going to make a token. But if you don't attack, I'll make the token during your end step. I get to attack with it and still have my reflection up. And yep. Fable of the Mirror Breaker, not legendary. Kikijiki was, but this is not the Mirror Breaker <laughs> himself. This is just a fable. This is just a story. So we can have multiples in play. Yeah, let's just get a whole pack of wolves going. Why not? And that traverse is not a live draw. <laughs> and Sam Black is quickly falling behind in a game that he looked pretty good in. It, it, it's unfortunate to say, but this game might get to a point where Sam has to just attack with a conspiracy theorist, throw it away just to try yeah. to draw an extra card and find a removal for this reflection of Kikijiki because he doesn't have much time left if this game continues oh. as it's going. <laughs> Look at Kenta's face. He knows. He's like, oh, I can have three. Please do. Do I, do I need three is what Kenta's really asking because he's already overwhelmingly ahead in this game. And he's asking himself, is this fable going to be better than a random draw? And, you know, when your opponent is struggling so hard to deal with your first reflection of Kikijiki and you can line up two more reflections of Kikijiki to come, <laughs> I, I would say, yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah, put it down. What's what's the worst that could happen? I mean, there's no board wipes from Sam Black side of things, so go ham. Yeah, you're the one that brought the Meat Hook Massacre. You know on the other side <laughs> yeah. it doesn't exist, and, you know, Sam doesn't have a draw here. I talked about throwing mm -hmm. the theorist in there, but it, it doesn't even matter. Yeah, there's nothing that's going to get him <laughs> out of that situation. Kenta Harane picking up a very, very quick victory there with the Rakdos deck now.